This video is based on the systematic review by Jiang et al. in the year 2023. They investigated the diagnostic accuracy of clinical signs or examination maneuvers in the diagnosis of degenerative cervical myelopathy. Download the free PhysioTutors app now and become the best clinician you can be. They included participants from 18 years on, but important to note is that these participants were all atraumatic, so spinal cord injury resulting from a trauma was not in the scope of this review. Degenerative cervical myelopathy is an overarching term to describe various degenerative conditions of the cervical spine that cause myelopathy. It refers to a condition in which, the word says it, degenerative changes lead to spinal cord injury. As with all degenerative changes, it is a progressive condition meaning that it will worsen over time. Degenerative changes such as narrowing of the spinal canal due to, for example, osteophytic changes or ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament or ligamentum flavum are possible causative factors. As it is a degenerative condition, it is mostly encountered in older people, but younger individuals may be affected due to, for example, disc herniations or congenital stenosis or subluxations as well. As it is a progressive condition, it develops gradually. At first, it will be very subtle. For example, people may notice some mild numbness in their arms or hands. However, it may progress to severe symptoms of gait instability, tetraparesis and incontinence. Therefore, it is especially important to recognize it early enough to avoid the progression of symptoms to an irreversible phase. The diagnostic accuracy of clinical signs or examination maneuvers was studied in 11 papers. The meta-analysis revealed that for the presence of pathological reflexes, the Tromner sign was the most sensitive and specific with values of 0.94 and 0.93 respectively. The pathological reflexes with high specificity were the Babinski and Hoffman signs and the inverted supernator and clonus signs. When hyperreflexia or hyporeflexia was studied, the meta-analysis showed that the presence of hyperreflexia had a specificity of 0.72, and hyporeflexia, defined as the absence of deep tendon reflexes, had a specificity of 0.84. The specificity of hyperreflexia of the triceps, biceps, and brachioradialis was 0.78, 0.87 and 0.89 respectively. In the lower extremities, hyperreflexia of the patellar and Achilles tendon yielded a specificity of 0.93 and 0.95 respectively. Gait deviation was examined by one study and reached a specificity of 0.94. It is reported that this may be one of the earliest signs of degenerative cervical myelopathy the gait disturbance is described as being unsteady, broad-based or spastic. This occurs because of impaired proprioception combined with upper motor neuron dysfunction. As a result, the gait velocity will be lowered, the stride length will be shortened and the cadence will be slower. The step width will be broadened and the double support time will be increased. It is recommended to think of degenerative cervical myelopathy when falls are recurrent and gait deterioration is present. Of course, older individuals will likely also experience these findings, so the use of clinical tests to support these findings is warranted. The combination of these tests in clinical prediction tools was studied by Cook et al. in 2010 and by Uri et al. in 2009. The first found with a sensitivity of 94% that the presence of degenerative cervical myelopathy was unlikely when none or only one out of the following signs was present. Gait deviation, Hoffman sign, inverted supernator sign, Binsky sign and age over 45 years. When none or only one of these are present, degenerative cervical myelopathy can be excluded. However, when three out of these five variables were present, specificity was 99% and the positive likelihood ratio was more than 30. Quite similar findings were seen by Re et al, who indicated that the presence of at least one sign out of the Hoffman 
inverted supinator sign, Babinski sign, and clonus had 70% sensitivity for diagnosing the condition. The presence of hyperreflexia at any deep tendon may indicate a possible presence of degenerative cervical myelopathy. Hyperreflexia in the lower extremities is more sensitive than in the upper extremities. This is due to the underlying pathology where the reflexes below the affected level become exaggerated due to reduced descending inhibition from the corticospinal tract. Upper motor neuron syndrome may arise from various other conditions than just degenerative cervical myelopathy. If this sign is present, this should lead to early referral to specialized neurology care. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. For a ton of more research-related content, I refer you to our PhysioTutors app. This was Ellen for PhysioTutors. See you in the next video. Bye.